Here it is! What? I can't believe I landed right where I needed to go. I can't believe I hit him right where I needed to hit him. Wow. Down here! If you play the level up past the, the, the ramp with the very first blowy statue, there's a small cave which contains a token and a fruit, which I already got the token. It also spawns the Galaxian and also a packed out trail to take us back right outside the, the entrance. And this is what the level looks like. And off screen in between episodes when I was looking for this, I discovered that you can change the camera angle. I had seen it in some footage of the game, but I had mashed a, go a couple of buttons and apparently didn't mash the button I needed to, which was R. Pressing R zooms out the camera. Oh, which is pretty neat. It gives us a, a what on earth? What, what on earth? Gives us a nice big picture of the level. So we get quite a, quite a large advantage being able to see where every ghost is at all times. Uh, um, um, wait, wait, I'm actually stuck. I, I'm mashing every button I have. I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> wow, great start, guys, look at this. <laughs> you're not supposed, you're supposed to just auto win the level, and they didn't expect you, for you to do anything after, you when you're trying to land. I cannot get out. I have to quit. I have to quit the level. <laughs> Great start, guys. I had to complete the level to get the Galaxian to register, but I guess I won't. I guess I won't. Hey, guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to the Le to Legend of Zelda Pac-Man World 2. To the Legend of Zelda Pac-Man World 2. When we last left off, I ended by saying that this level, the first level of this episode, is my favorite level. My favorite level in the entire game. This is the one that I would play over and over as a child, believing that it was the best place to farm lives, and up until, I mean, last week, it was, to my knowledge. But, I would play it over and over and over again because it's so much fun! And I want to hype it up more so that this moment lasts longer, but I have to start the level. Let's do it. Blade Mountain! We're gonna do it! Oh, the best level! Welcome to the summit of Blade Mountain, Pac-Man. The only way down the other side is on a frozen river of ice. I have ice skates for you to wear so you don't slip and fall on all of the ice. I also have some tips to help you get to the bottom safely. Press up to maintain maximum speed. Use the ramps to clear the icy waters. Press the A button at the top of each ramp to get maximum height. You can flip kip crates in the air just by pressing the B button just before hitting them. It also, I believe, no longer uh, shortens our jump, which is nice. Be careful out there, Pac-Man! All of Pac-Land is counting on you! Blade Mountain? Blade Mountain! Oh, the music! The everything! We can know- the mechanics have fundamentally changed, and this is the first part of the game, and get used to this, where the mechanics will be completely changed and none of the the prior mechanics stay. And this is essentially a new game. We can no longer we can no longer butt bounce. Instead we have a shorter jump, because we're on ice, and we can flip kick closer to the ground than we could before. The flip kick is now our primary method of attacking. And we can't even rev roll. All of the mechanics have changed. But for the better, for the better. Let's get up to speed so you can see what I'm talking about. I've never seen a game do this, where you're able to go so fast and ice mechanics are made so fun. The fact that an ice world is the, is the, has the level that I look forward to the most is saying so much. 
and you're able to go so fast. I love it. This pack dot trail will give us the optimal, uh, the, it'll give me the optimal path to take so I don't get hit by the icicles, so I'll try and stick to that. I'm currently at, oop, if we do get hit, we do lose a bit of control. And this is also the level that is the worst to 100%. And this is the reason, woo, why I never, why I, I never claimed that I was going for 100%, because imagine trying to get all these pack dots while going this fast. Speaking of which, secret. Oh, eh. Got it. Cool. <laughs> Pac-Man is not happy about this. He is not happy at all. Uh, can I? Yeah, let's let's get down here. Let's get back up to speed. Let's go. I got the secret. I'm gonna take this ramp. Get some mad hang time air. Get a life. You can see already what I mean about the lives. We've got, I think we've gotten two already. And jump. Grab that. Through a cave. And the music is so adventurous. It, it perfectly, it perfectly encapsulates what this level is all about, which is having as much fun as possible. And fun fact, this game is considered a selling point by, uh, by the, what do, I, what do I want to call it? By the, uh, the, not publication, but like the, the promotion team, because it's mentioned. It's one of two levels mentioned on the, the back of the game's cover. Back of the game's cover. That's kind of an oxymoron. And it mentions this mechanic because it's just that fun. It's so much of a selling point. And I wish more games did this. And yes, I know you can get like, you can get skiing games, but I doubt that they're this fun. I doubt that they have you going off jumps like this, and they're, that they're so fast paced. This is so good. You can see why I'd play this over and over. All apples collected. Oh, I think we're in the final leg of the level, unfortunately. Get our checkpoint. This episode might be a bit short. Grab another life. It's just so wonderful. I love it. The fact that there's insta-kill hazards, I don't even care. I don't even care that there are insta-kill hazards. If I die, that just that's great. I get to play the level again. Music stopped. Grab all the strawberries. Oh, we have a we have really good handling, actually. This is better than I remember, which I guess it's better than ski handling because it's ice skating, which is technically not possible in real life because this, this place isn't buffed out. Oh, boy. Oh, I, I handled that. Man, this is coming back to me. <laughs> this being a level that I used to quote-unquote practice by pl uh, playing it over and over, it makes sense that why I would have some good control on it. Okay, I think we're nearing the end. Oh, I don't want to jump it. You can't- I can't just jump that- that little ice section. Oh, here's the end! Here's the end! I missed the thing, but that's fine! And we're here! This is the end of the level. Let's see if we got a melon. I don't remember if we did. We did! So we can get the- the Galaxian. And I guess I could show this because <laughs> Pac-Man's pose was weird there. I guess I can show this because the level is going. The episode's going to be so short. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, we're also skating. I forgot about that. It doesn't actually change my mechanics at all. Where on earth? There you are. Uh, fruit target. Can I grab that? I might be dead. No, I'm fine. Oh no, I'm dead. Yep. I was. I was hoping. I was hoping that one of them would turn. But I was not that lucky. But yeah, the ice skates don't change my mechanics at all. And I, I didn't expect for that level to be that short, so uh, what did you think? <laughs> I guess it's fast-paced and the levels have to be loaded one at a time. So it makes sense that it was short, just because there's, you know, you're going through it so quickly. But I, I wish the entire world f used that mechanic. Am I dead again? Did I, I bamboozled myself again. I might die just because I'm commentating this. Uh, let's... Switch, maybe? R? There we go. It's kind of finicky. I guess I, I understand now why I, I didn't... Why pressing all of the buttons didn't work for me. Sometimes pressing R does not work. And it won't change the camera. Which, again, another aspect where the camera's a bit weird. But I'm not faulting the game that much. Okay, it looks like they're all in a pack, so I should just... Oh, never mind. One of them took the warp. I get to enjoy this music a little bit more. I have not taken any of the power pellets, so I'm going to wait for them to get close. And you, sir, are my free 200 points. Yeah, I can just chain this to victory. I never had to use a single power pellet. I did die twice, and that's probably why, because I never used power pellet. Oh, we missed him. Yeah, just a, a nice, calm skate. In fact, I'm, I'm just going to play this the end of this level with my with one hand. I have this in the bag. Unless he flashes. No, I'm fine. And goodbye. That was a 
bit clunky in terms of how well I performed, but we did it. Please respond us at the beginning of the level so I can play it again! Ah, that's sad. I'll probably play through the level a few more times just for the end slate. Because it was so fun! And that's the end of the level. In his article on Game Informer, Ben Reeves explained that video games fulfill a set of needs. The first is the need for competence. We seek out control and wish to feel mastery over a situation. The second is the desire for independence, to have control over our actions. The developers of Breath of the Wild created a world in which the player does indeed have full control. Nothing tells them what to do or where to go, and there are hundreds of ways to approach any given problem. More control means that you can apply your imagination to your movement. It raises the ceiling of what is possible. So why then, do so many games dedicate an entire world towards taking that control away? The reason I say that, and why I hate Ice Age, is because you have a different set of control than what you're used to. And the same case of trying to get used to Luigi U compared to Mario U. But that on top of the ice is still frustrating, and while it is technically the proper difficulty, it's still frustrating as all hell. When you get used to one specific thing and then suddenly it changes it up, then you have to readjust. That's the thing. Why do ice worlds exist? The reason is simple. It adds difficulty. But does that justify it? Well, not exactly. If it did, then so too would this be justified. Ice levels are almost as bad as water levels. Oh, that is exactly why. Add difficulty while maintaining fairness. That sounds like a simple task, as though making an entertaining level is as easy as following a recipe. But if you follow a recipe, you don't understand what spices are responsible for what flavors. You don't know why you're supposed to use them, they're just in the recipe. Sure, if you experiment, there are definitely going to be some meals that people spit out. But after a few failures, you understand what everything does, and people start asking for more. When you follow a recipe, you make the new Super Mario Bros. series. But when you experiment and learn how to make something from scratch, you make Donkey Kong Country 2. Last episode I said that Ice Worlds are a litmus test that offer insight into the capabilities of the devs. Tell me, in which of these examples does it show that the developers understand the ingredients of their craft? I don't even think I need to tell you which of these examples is which. It's obvious. Just as it was obvious to you as I played through this world that the devs understood their ingredients. There are two main approaches towards making ice worlds. The first is the mechanical approach, where the main features of the environment are slippery surfaces, slow movement in snow, a time limit before you freeze, death water, ice blockades, and enemies that freeze you. The aim of the mechanical approach is to add difficulty through realism. Most of these mechanics are properties found in real-life tundra. The world is unforgiving, difficult to traverse, and generally inhospitable. The other is the aesthetic approach, where the main features are strong visual themes of serenity, comfort, or holiday cheer, gorgeous vistas, occasional low visibility, and lower difficulty. This approach plays on the feelings that snow normally evokes in a person. It satisfies our innate desire for warmth and comfort, and emulates the serenity that a thick blanket of snow creates. The music, more so than ever, is looking for an emotional response from the player. This isn't black and white. Very few games follow one approach exclusively. This environment is too beautiful to not replicate, and too harsh to not emulate. However, it is always clear what the aim was, which brings us to Pac-Man World 2. Obviously, this is the mechanical approach. The developers ran with a snow day sledding and snowball fight theme, with the music sounding adventurous and full of glee. We start off with Ice River Run, which is dense with traditional slippery surfaces. That's at first glance, but a closer look reveals that those ice physics are almost completely avoidable. If you platform well, then the ice can be avoided. They're a punishment for complacent jumps and sloppy platforming. Notice that these safe havens also protect the players from rev ramps. The game is telling you to be intentional with your movement. Players who take this hint will also figure out how to skip entire segments of the level, or find secrets well off the beaten path. Not enough games make use of avalanches as a hazard. It's an interesting set piece that, unfortunately, in this implementation, 
leads to a lot of deaths and the need for memorization. I'm not saying that this can't be done on the first try, but some of the hazards feel unfair. Did you follow this visual cue that was well established in multiple parts of the level? Quaked! <laughs> While I do have some friction with the implementation of this level, I also respect it for some of its finer points. For one, the patches of the ice reinforce the message that the player needs to be intentional with their movement. They must commit to a direction knowing that they won't be able to change course. It also makes use of these icy gusts as a hazard in the second act, and a useful boost in the final. The thrill of skipping so much of the level with these boisterous breezes makes one want to play the level again and again. Sure, they do have an equal chance of killing you, but who is going to complain when stuff like this happens? Think back to your childhood, of that time where you ran across a frozen pothole and nearly broke your tailbone. No one complained about ice physics as a kid, and why is that? Well, it's because we have skates. Ice takes away friction. So why are we being asked to play ice levels at this pace? Take away the annoying jumps, increase the speed, and let the player soar. When done correctly, Ice Worlds act as a portfolio of the developer, a proclamation that they understand the components of their craft and how to use them to their fullest. Up until I started to analyze game design, I believed that the aesthetic approach was the only way to make an enjoyable ice level. Pac-Man World 2 showed me that that's not the case. The mechanical approach does not have to be an obligatory and rage-inducing removal of control. Despite their temperature, ice levels can be fluid. They equip the player with the grace of a figure skater, giving them equal measures of speed and control. And in spite of their harshness, ice levels can be enchanting. They comfort the player with their silence and enrapture them with their serenity. A canvas response is a reflection of its artist. With intent and understanding, the canvas reflects the artist's vision. But with complacency and ignorance, the canvas reflects the artist's frustration. This has been my introspective on ice levels in video games. Thank you for watching. Capping off this ice world, and what an ice world it's been, Pinky's Revenge. Revenge for what? I'm not sure. Oh, it's the girl ghost. Oh, Pac-Man, you want the stupid golden fruit, don't you? Spooky was right, you never wanted me. Well, if I can't have you, nobody will. <laughs> I forgot about this music. Oh, yeah, we, we do have a recycled boss. Thankfully, though, it doesn't have saw blades, so they're not going to be sticking in the ground. This is Inky's Blade-O-Matic all over again. It's... Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, let's forget that that ever happened. I was trying to get the life because that's efficient. I can grab that every single time I die and... Woo, that's dangerous. Yeah, it's. it doesn't really matter how much damage those snowballs deal. It's the fact that they... Got him. Got her, sorry. It's the fact that they have a chance of insta-killing. Maybe I should stay on the ground. That might be better. Have some traction on my side. I would like to point out how good this music is. It's... Oh, you're just playing hard to get, aren't you? That's me. The... I actually am not a silent protagonist, because this character actually speaks. Uh... Oh, oh, the... The b doings are off the side of the stage. That's... Whoa! Okay! Cool. Uh, can you... What is your attack going to be? Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm not sure. Yeah, but this music is one <laughs> one of my favorites in terms of, of a boss theme. There's just so much so much going on in it. And it's it's chaotic. It sounds peaceful at the start. It sounds like a, a, a blissful like Christmas dinner from like a holiday, like a Hallmark holiday movie, and then it just turns into chaos, and I love it.
I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to be doing here. Please don't die. <laughs> I, I haven't really died to this boss yet. I've kind of just died to myself. So let's, if I can fix that, that means I'm going to be invincible. She's not even at half health yet, which is kind of odd that we got... Oh, don't freeze me. Jump off. Okay, I should be fine. So she can freeze me. That's not good. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Where are you going? Don't hit me. Ah. Uh, I need health. Oh, or I can get a hit in. Perfect. Got got her to half health. That's good. This is no way to treat a lady. I don't know why she just naturally has a British accent. Uh, I need help. I need help. I need help. Got it. Good. Uh, yeah, I should probably go get. Oh, actually, no. Free hit. Free hit. Never mind. Now I do need help. Oh, okay. Forget that happened. I said, I guess I should have taken cover. Yes, that's exactly what I said. That is how I should have done it. And it's the way that I take out Pinky's Blower? That's the name they went with? <laughs> okay. Cool. I am a good name you got there. And it's not a localization thing because... This was made by Namco USA. Okay, she's... Down? What is she doing? She's doing that! I guess it's an apt name. That is exactly what she's doing. I also haven't seen a use for the, the bee doings yet. I'm through playing with you. I mean, you should be... Happy that at least Pac-Man's paying attention to you. She is... She was kind of yonder... Yondering... In the opening cutscene. Okay. What are you going to do with your borrowed tech? Oh, you're going to do that. Okay. Cover. Yeah, cover is much better than trying to dodge these things. Because just through the randomness of them. Don't. 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 Yes, that's right. I was so tempted to hit her there, but I don't think I could. Get cover, get cover. Ooh, that was sweet. That was, that was so cinematic. I just dive into cover. <laughs> I chickened out there. Or I, I guess I thought I hit her. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. The angling of these bee doings is kind of strange. I'm not sure what they're aiming at. They're also a bit hard to jump on. But you know what? I'll give it a shot. What does this do? It kills me. Oh, you know what? I'm glad I experimented with that because now I know what my options are. I can I can always take that if I... If I'm feeling like... I don't know. If I'm feeling like... Death is the, the solution. Uh, no. Yes! <laughs> no! You know, I don't actually feel like I'm bad at the game. I just feel like I make some stupid mistakes sometimes. That... Uh, I guess maybe I should see coming? I can't crouch. I, I almost tried to press a button to crouch, but it probably would have rev rolled me. Don't freeze me. Don't freeze me. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure what those are for. They Every time I've used them, they've ended in death. Dive. Yes. Okay. Good. And then I'll head you off the pass here, and that might kill you? No, not quite. One more hit. One more hit, and Pinky's blower has what been blown up. There, there. I, I salvaged that without making it break my my uh commitment to making this channel clean <laughs> okay do your little thing yep yep sweep the the stage dive under cover oh, look at that maybe that's supposed to do that i'm not sure yeah every time i've used it it's been a terrible idea i'm going to try and use it one more time yeah it just sends us to center stage Kind of drunk there, are, are you, Pinky? Yeah, he's gonna sweep the thing again. Okay, this should be it. This should be it. The next time you come around, you'll be dead. Unless you go that way. Why am I staying on here? Oh, it goes one, two. It goes one, two. Okay, that's that's good to know. That's pattern recognition right at the end. Got him. Her. I mean, yeah. Take that, your copy-paste machine. Not bright enough to make your own 
contraption of death. You have to steal someone else's the golden apple. Do you want to save? Yes. No, skip that part. Ice World Down. That was a short episode. I actually I thought it was I knew it was going to be short, so that's why I mean, I did a topic of the day, but I didn't think it would be that short. Next time, you might think that it, there's another Ice World in store, but no, we are heading into the volcano. I'm not going to say this is my least favorite world, but I will say it is the world that is the cutoff point for when I first got this game. As a child, neither I nor Nova could could beat this world. We could not get through it. And it wasn't until a few years later that we were finally able to break through. And much like Pikmin 2 and the Titan... Or, sorry, the final boss fight of the game. Spoilers, sorry. This is one that we got stuck on and we threw many lives at it. Hence why I spent so many so many hours farming lives at Blade Mountain. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode in any capacity, then please share it with your friends. I release new episodes of Pac-Man World 2 every Tuesday and Thursday, and I will see you guys next time when we enter, we go from the snow world to the lava world. See you guys then.